Hi, I'm Tony, also known on Instagram as Toyo496, and this is Charles, who's the owner of Rock Red UTV, and you are watching Side by Side Garage. Tony and I have put over 18,000 miles on our side by sides across a multitude of trains. Together, we have more than 40 years of automotive, mechanical, welding, and fabrication experience. We've decided to put our knowledge and years of experience together to start Side by Side Garage. We will have a series of instructional videos to share with you what we have learned, which covers everything from proper maintenance to modifications and custom fabrication. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share. In our first video today, we are going to open up the transmission in this 2019 Razor Turbo S 4-seater and discuss how it works and the modifications we are going to do to it. To open up the transmission, the first thing you need to do um, is take off the cover off your gear selector. So there's a little snap ring right there. All right, once you get the clip off, take off a little spring washer. That's a regular washer. Be careful there. Don't do what I did a second ago and try to take the whole thing off the spring washer on there and watch it go flying through the air. Then you gotta find it. Once that's off, use a 10 mil. Now this has um, sealant or gasket underneath there, so you gotta pry it up. All right, now that we got the cover off, we can see what's going on here. This spring goes right here. It just keeps tension on this. So basically you have your cable coming in from your shifter, and then you've got the little aluminum piece that goes on here. So whenever you pull or push your shifter forward and back, it's doing this right here, which is turning this little shaft. So now you can see there's one mark there and then two marks on this one. Right now this transmission is in high. A lot of guys say to take the transmission apart in high. And the reason why is because that'll ensure that these are in the correct spots whenever you go to put it back together. Um, you don't have to, but for example, let's say you took this apart and you had it in park whenever you took this cover off. The little one indention would be rotated over this direction and the two mark would be over here. So they wouldn't be, even though they're still meshed together correctly, it would be harder to tell that they're meshed together correctly. You'd have to be like counting the, counting the teeth and stuff like that, let's say if you were putting the transmission back together. So I'm gonna take these out. You're gonna need a 12 mil socket and just take out all the bolts. All right, once you get all the bolts out, there's some pry areas on the case. You can see one right there, one there, and one right there. So I'm gonna use this. You just stick it in here and you pry it apart. All right, now that we have the transmission open, I can actually show you the workflow and what goes on on the inside. So down here, this is called your input shaft. This is where your secondary clutch rides. And whenever you give it gas, this is gonna spin just like it is right now. And it's gonna transfer the power from your input shaft through either your low, your reverse, or your high over onto your reverse shaft. This reverse shaft has a gear on it right here. It's part of the shaft. It transfers over right here, this is your stage two over here, and then it's transferring your stage three. And then this shaft, your pinion shaft, goes down there. So this has two purposes. This gear goes over to your ring gear, and this is where your rear axles are. And then the pinion shaft goes down through your bearing retainer plate and down to your snorkel. 
and this is your output shaft going to your drive shaft so you can spin your front tires. All right, so notice right now this transmission is in park. So if you were to hit the gas in park, you know that it just revs kind of like neutral. The difference is that when you're in park, this shift fork is in the utmost position right up here, the topmost position, so that this right here is actually engaged in the other half of your case right here. This is your parking paw. That's what keeps you from being able to move whenever you're in park. Now what I'm going to do is actually turn the shift drum as if you were shifting out of park and going into reverse. This top shift fork is going to go down a little bit because of that groove right there which would disengage right here from the parking paw, but it's not going to go down far enough to engage on low. And this bottom one is actually going to lift up and engage with the reverse. So each, each of these gears rides on needle bearings because the load is actually not transferred onto the shafts directly. It's transferred through these shift dogs. So let me place this here. And let's go into reverse. Right there. Now you can see reverse. Notice which direction the gears are turning. And that output shaft is turning clockwise right now. All right, you saw reverse. The next thing you want to do is turn the shift drum a little bit more. And that's going to make this top shift fork drop down in that groove right there, which will push this shift drum down to engage on the low. And then down here, this is actually going to change. You can see right now it's up. It's kind of hard to see there, but right now it's up in that groove. And that's going to drop down a little bit, which is going to pull this shift drum down off of the reverse gear. Okay, so right now it's still in reverse. What we're going to do is turn the shift drum. That should help drop down there. You can see it just dropped it into low. So now that's engaged. Reverse is no longer engaged. See? And when you spin it, notice now we're going back the other direction. Now we're going forward. We're going counterclockwise right there. Notice the speed that those are spinning too as I turn this input shaft. Now we're going to go from low into high gear. This groove comes back up, so that'll disengage low because it'll pull the shift fork and the shift drum up. And then down here, you can see right there, that groove drops down, which will drop the shift fork down, which will drop the shift drum down, and it'll engage on our high gear down here. All right, so let's go into high gear. There it's in high. Notice the low is no longer engaged. High is now engaged. Turn it. See it's spinning the same direction, but it's spinning a little bit faster because we're in high. All right, that's the inside of the Razor transmission broke all the way down to the simplest form of what exactly takes place whenever you're shifting gears and whenever you're hitting the gas. Something I'm going to talk about real quick is the high gear and what happens whenever you're trying to shift into high and you don't stop or you are stopped but your machine is actually not down at idle you like you've revved it up so i'm going to take the reverse shaft out so i can show you that all right so i've got the reverse shaft out and i'm going to show you what happens on those guys that are trying to shift into high gear at a low and they don't stop their machine so this stage two is still going to be spinning with your tires like that. So even if your machine is down at idle, when you try to shift into gear, you try to go from low to high. This would try to go over and engage on the high gear, and it's spinning and it wants to bounce off of it. And you can damage the edges of your shift dog, you can damage the edges right there on your high gear. And then it's just the opposite whenever you try to shift from low into high gear, you're stopped, but the machine's not down at idle. So whenever that happens, this shaft is not spinning. Your shift dog isn't spinning, but your high gear is spinning because you just, just tried to do a neutral drop or something. It's spinning like that, tries to shift over into high, and it's 
banging off of there. So the damage that can occur from that is this snap ring right here. Notice there's a gap down between the bearing and the snap ring and then you got the washer and you got the needle bearings with the gear on it right there. So that force that's exerted on that high gear over this direction can cause that snap ring right there to either deform or can actually break. And once that happens, your high gear is then free to shift over this way. So then your shift dog, whenever you go into high gear, it can only go over so far because of that, um, the grooves on your shift drum. So it can't, depending on how much it's shifted over, it might not get fully engaged, it might be on the edge, or it might not get engaged at all. It might be out here like this spinning. So make sure that whenever you go to shift, that you're actually stopping and you're actually letting the machine go down to idle. So there is a fix, or at least some insurance, for that snap ring. It's one of these right here. This one's from CryoKey. It's called a high gear snap ring delete or a high gear spacer. And basically you take this bearing off, take that snap ring and washer out of there, and you put this spacer in its place. So then, if you ever do have a situation where you shift into gear and it didn't quite get down to idle, you don't have to worry about that snap ring and, and the issue of the high gear getting pushed over. So. We hope you found this video about how the Razor transmission works helpful and entertaining. Join us for part two of the Razor transmission discussion where we will cover common gear reductions including the Polaris Ace 325 gears. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share.